Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight, we gather as friends in order to anticipate the 117th anniversary of the proclamation of Philippine independence this Friday and to celebrate the long-standing friendship between the Filipino and Chinese peoples, as well as the contributions of Chinese Filipinos to our national development. These occasions hold significant meaning for all of us, perhaps best illustrated in the image you see before you. This picture was taken in 1899 in Yokohama, Japan. The man seated is Dr. Sun Yat-sen, honored as the father of modern China. Standing beside him is Mariano Ponce, a close personal friend of both Dr. Sun Yat-sen and our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal, and thus a member of the generation who fought for the establishment of an independent Philippines. In 1898, a year before this photograph was taken, we Filipinos proclaimed our independence in Cavite. In 1911, Sun Yat-sen overthrew the oppressive Qing dynasty. Both these men were spurred to action by the principles of freedom and equality and the desire for progress, peace, and stability for their countrymen. These very aspirations brought them together as friends and as partners who sought to help each other in their respective struggles. Many of you would have heard the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. This photograph encapsulates the solidarity and the drive for independence of our forefathers these and friendship are the legacies our, funding, our founding generations have left to us, born of shared experiences. We Filipinos had to reclaim our sovereignty from fallen foreign colonizers. We had to do so again in 1986 from a dictatorship imposed by one of our own countrymen. China has likewise had to reclaim its dignity and sovereignty from the impositions of foreigners in the past. Thus. Today, we are given an opportunity to revisit the fundamental basis of our relationship, a relationship consecrated by the heroes we revere and focused on our goals for our peoples, prosperity, stability, and the rule of law. The full integration of Chinese Filipinos into our society is itself proof of the solidarity that can be realized from such a relationship. History has shown us that Chinese Filipinos were not treated as full citizens of the Philippines back in the day. Yet, your forefathers chose to set this aside in favor of contributing to national development. Indeed, in every sphere of public life, whether in the days of our forefathers or in the present, excellence has been displayed by Chinese Filipinos. General Ignacio Pawa fought alongside the heroes of our revolution in the struggle to claim independence. Decades later, it would be General Vicente Lim engaging in battle during the Second World War. In politics, we have Sergio Osmeña, our first Speaker of the House, our first elected Vice President, and our President from 1944 to 1946. In law, there is the example of Claudio Tihanqi, who did not hesitate to stand up for the rights of the people during the Marcos dictatorship. Filipino art and culture bear the mark of Ang Kyoko, a national artist for visual arts. As Filipinos, they, in their everyday lives, did their part to build our nation. This is being continued by the FFCCCII. Your economic and civic contributions are vast. You have provided jobs to so many of your countrymen through the companies you manage and own. At the same time, you have taken it upon yourself to empower them in other ways, building classrooms for public schools and housing for Filipinos affected by Typhoon Yolanda providing assistance to victims of other tragedies, including that of the recent Valenzuela fire, conducting medical missions, and supporting our national police, among others. For everything you have done and you will continue to do, let me express our gratitude. Thank you for all your efforts. This is the kind of solidarity that must go beyond our national borders. It is the kind of solidarity all nations of goodwill must strive to accomplish. Countries can no longer rely solely on their own strengths. In many ways, our successes and failures are dependent on the successes and failures of partners and friends in the global community. Challenges such as pandemics, global terrorism, and climate change, or even those related to economic growth, become infinitely less daunting when we work to overcome them in unison with others. That is why we have always been determined 
to work with other nations to improve our collective fortunes, economic or otherwise. For example, as proof of our intentions to have friendly relations with the People's Republic of China, we need only look at the sector of tourism. At the time of my first state visit, or my state visit to China in 2011, the Philippines was sending almost 830,000 tourists to China, while Chinese tourists also visited the Philippines, and they numbered around 190,000. The situation has seen some improvement over the years. In 2013, over 426,000 Chinese tourists visited the Philippines. This still does not compare, however, to the almost 1 million Filipinos who traveled to China, visited its historical and cultural sites, and contributed to its economic growth in 2013. The discrepancy is heightened especially when you take into consideration the fact that our country represents roughly about 1 13th of China's total population. This trend continues in trade and investment. In 2011 again, during that same visit to China, I spoke to a gathering of businessmen. It was pointed out that back then, Filipino direct investments into China totaled roughly $2.8 billion, while Chinese investments into the Philippines were roughly at $600 million. Indeed, the kind of world we live in today's demands, in, we live in today demands greater solidarity from all nations, based on the truism that stronger relationships between nations redound to the benefit of their peoples and also to the entire world. In trade and investment, as with all other aspects of the relations between the Philippines and China, there is much that we can improve on, as long as our relationship is strengthened by mutual respect. The, de the determination to maintain fairness and harmony and a firm commitment to the rule of law. Let me emphasize that this does not only take place on the level of governments. Everyone, including businessmen and captains of industry like yourselves, have a role to play. It is my hope that we all bear this in mind as we commemorate the independence of the Philippines, an occasion that likewise underscores our interdependence with the world and consequently our desire then as today to be and to act as a responsible member of the community of nations. Moving forward, may we all strive to do our part in enhancing cooperation and unity as our forefathers did, whether to uplift the lives of Filipinos on our shores or to work towards fostering stability that will redound to the benefit of all. Thank you. Good day.